Whenever I tell people that I work with honeybees, invariably I get one or two responses. Oh, honeybees. You work with honeybees. You probably like honey. <laughs> and, oh, honeybees. You probably get stung. Now, it so happens that I do like honey, and I am sometimes stung. And while honey and stinging are amazing features of honeybees, today I'm going to talk to you about another feature, even more amazing and less known, a sophisticated communication system that is absolutely unique just to them, a system that allows the coordination of some 40,000 individual bees into a single cohesive society. When a forager has discovered a good patch of flowers, she comes back to the hive, and she communicates the location of where they're located with the waggle dance. Can you see the dancing bee? OK, we'll make it a little bit easier for you. What you just saw was a bee running forward, waggling her body very quickly from side to side. This is called the waggle run. She then stopped, turned either to the left or the right, circled back in the return phase, and then did another waggle run. She repeated this circuit of waggle run and return phase many times. Let's see that again. Here's a waggle run and another waggle run. Now, we are most interested in the waggle run because within it are two pieces of information direction and distance. The bee communicates direction by the way she faces when she's doing the waggle run. The bee communicates distance by the duration of the waggle run. So for this bee, she's dancing at about 270 degrees from up. This communicates that out there, the flower patch is located 270 degrees from where the sun is on the horizon. The duration of about one second communicates that the flower patch is located about 750 meters away from the beehive. Together, this distance and this direction are able to tell all these other bees the location to the resource. So here we have our hive in the foreground, the sun on the horizon. At 270 degrees from the sun on the horizon, 750 meters is the good stuff. Now at any one time in a hive, most of the dances that we see going on are for nectar and pollen. This is the food. But bees also dance for new nest sites. Bees dance for water on a really hot day. Bees will dance for tree resin when they need to plug up holes in the hive. So a bee will dance any time there's a resource that the colony needs. And in all those different contexts, the bee uses the same mechanism of giving a distance and a direction. Bees also indicate quality, because the better of the resource, the more of these waggle runs she'll repeat within the same dance. When bees visit flowers for nectar and for pollen, they also are providing the plant and us with an important service of pollination. This bee is collecting nectar from an apple blossom. But while she is taking the nectar from the blossom, she's also getting dusted with pollen on her body. This pollen she takes with her when she goes to visit the next blossom. Now it's these bee visits that will turn this into this. Honeybees are the primary pollinators for some 50-plus fruits and vegetables that add diversity, that add taste, that add nutrition, that add coffee to our table. The proportion of our diet that needs insect pollinators is increasing. It's increased some 300% in the past 50 years. Meanwhile, the number of bee colonies in the world is declining. One reason for this decline is that there's simply less food available for bees. Crops are food, yes, but crops only bloom for limited periods of time. That means for the rest of the summer, for the rest of the autumn, our bees are confronted with beautiful, bucolic, rolling hills of grass. This landscape provides very little forage for the bees. 
The next time you're in the supermarket and you're strolling down the aisle, look at the jars of honey and realize that for every kilogram of honey that you see, that is some 50,000 individual bee foraging trips. Our work aims to understand where in this, the existing landscape, the bees are finding the flowers that they need. Knowing where an organism collects its food is important for any conservation effort. So here, the RSPV is accessorizing a bird with a GPS device. But not only do they need to capture this bird and put this device on its back, but seven days later, when the battery runs out, they need to recapture this bird, get this device back, and then get the data. This device records where the, is, the, where the bird is collecting its food. But we don't have to do this with the honeybees, because honeybees tell us where they've been. Returning foragers only dance for good resources. So that means that every dance that we see going on inside the hive, it's a, a vote that a bee is casting for where she thinks the society needs to concentrate its efforts. Better resources means more repeated waggle runs, so better resources means a stronger vote for that particular site. In our work, we eavesdrop on these conversations. We video record waggle dances and we decode them by hand. Duration, we get from software. Angles, we measure with protractors. And this we do over and over for every month that the bee is foraging. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of what this looks like, here are data from August 2009, which is when I first moved here to start working on this project. The center of the graph is where our lab and the bees are located. The concentric circles from that center show two, four, and six kilometers. And every yellow X that you see is a bee foraging location that we have decoded. Now, it's striking if you compare August 2009 with the following March 2010. What we show here is representative of what we're finding in our research using the waggle dance to see where bees forage. The bees are having to fly six times further in August compared to March. Now, flight is hard work, and the bees are really good at weighing up the cost of a longer distance flight against the benefit of the food they collect. So in other words, bees aren't going to fly six kilometers if they can get what they need at one kilometer. We take these graphs, and we put them on maps, and this lets us see where the bees are going, and just as importantly, where the bees are not going. And now, two and a half years on, we've decoded almost 7,000 dances. And one thing that we see is that in the springtime, there's a lot of flowers available, a lot of flowers there. So in the spring, the flowers compete for the bees. But in the summertime, the bees compete for the flowers. So a simple recommendation that is coming out of our work is if you want to help honeybees, plant something that blooms in August. A honeybee society is more than just 40,000 individuals in a loose confederation. Faced with the very real challenge of finding food and finding shelter in our landscape, the society works together as a cohesive unit. And just a side note about royalty, the honeybee queen, this beautiful lady in the middle with the paint dot, she does not direct operation. Her job, her only job, is to lay eggs. The daily operations of the bee society is accomplished without a leader. Perhaps the best example of this leaderless democracy is seen when a beehive moves home. When the colony needs a new nest site. It will leave its old nest site, and it will assemble somewhere nearby. Scouts will go out from this assembly and check for new potential nest sites. If a scout has found a, a good possible real estate, she comes back to the assembly, and she communicates the location of the new potential home using, any guesses? The waggle dance, yes. So here we have an assembly, and a scout is casting her vote for a new site located at 90 degrees. Meanwhile, another scout casts a dissenting vote at zero degrees. 
The assembly gives equal weight to these votes, and they themselves go out and check them, and then can come back and vote themselves. The better the site, the more attention, the more repeated waggle runs, ultimately the more support. At some point, scouting ceases, quorum is achieved. And then, in an amazing display of unity, in a matter of minutes, the entire assembly will depart en masse and fly together to the new nest site. Each bee, though she may have originally voted for a different site, will ultimately go with the consensus. Because in honeybee democracies, debate is central, but majority is the rule. And I'd like to thank all my friends who helped me collect these photos and these videos, and to you for being such a terrific audience. Thank you.